Hi all. Welcome to Wireless and Mobile Communication Lab session. I am Anush Yar from the Department of Electronics and Communication, New Horizon College of Engineering. Uh, in this session, we will be taking up the log shadowing normal model. So in the first two sessions on MATLAB, we had handled Okumura model and Hata model, which were outdoor propagation models. So let us now consider the log normal shadowing model. Now to understand the log normal shadowing model, we should have a fairly good understanding on the log distance path model, because it is an extension of your log distance path model. Now, what exactly is the analogy used in the log distance path model? In the log distance path model, it indicates the average received signal power, okay? It decreases logarithmically with distance. That was what was suggested, or that was what was proposed as a part of the model. That is, it indicated that the average received signal power decreases logarithmically with distance. And the path loss depends on the TR separation. That is the distance between your transmitting antennae and the receiving antennae. And is expressed as a function of distance by using path loss exponent n. This path loss exponent n, it basically depends on the kind of terrain. What is the, you know, what is the area under consideration? For example, I put up a table here showing different environments and their, uh, you know, corresponding path losses. Now, for example, if I consider a free space, the path loss exponent n has a value 2. If I'm talking about an urban area cellular radio, the range of your n varies between 2.7 to 3.5. And for a shadowed urban cellular radio, the range is between 3 to 5. And in building LOC, that is in, in building line of sight, you have a, a value ranging between 1.6 to 1.8. And obstructed in building, there you have a range between 4 to 6. And finally obstructed in factories, you have a range between 2 to 3. So this, these values have been considered depending upon what is the environment that we are currently choosing for our analysis, okay? So let us go back. So that is what is being considered here will be your value of n. Now here, here, here we can see the path loss at some point D, which where D is the separation distance between your transmitting and receiving antennae. It is directly proportional to D by D naught to the power of n. This is what has been given. Now, let us let us take a small consideration about what exactly this is. Now, if I consider my transmitting antenna, say I have this as my transmitting antenna. Okay. This is the transmitting antenna with some, you know, height of your transmitter given by HT. And then I have my, 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 my mobile station here. Okay. And they are separated by some distance D. And this is what we earlier called as the TR separation. The distance between your transmitting and receiving antenna. Okay. Now what, what is the consideration that we have taken here is we have taken D naught, which is some near field. So some point which is very close to your transmitter, we consider this point as D naught. And we find out what will be the loss at this point. What is the path loss corresponding to this point? What would be the strength of the received signal at this point? All, all you know, all the factors pertaining to your, uh, or to your transmissions shall be studied with regards to this reference point D naught. And then that can be further extended to your uh, distance D, whatever is the new, uh, you know, the separation distance D we are considering, it can be extended accordingly. So that is what has been told. When you are talking about the path loss at D, it is directly proportional to the path loss at D by D naught to the power of N. That is what has been stated here. The path loss, uh, at D is directly proportional to D by D naught to the power of N. Wherein, as we have seen earlier, it is the uh, path loss exponent, okay, depending upon what is the environment we are choosing. And then, uh, you know, 
you can you, um, replace it with a proportionality constant, which will be the path loss at D naught. And you can take log considering it, we will have the equation equivalently written as P L of D is equal to P L at D naught plus 10 N log D by D naught. This is what we get as the path loss in case of your log distance path loss model. Okay. So using your log distance path loss model, we get this equation to find out what will be the path loss at D, which is the uh, TR separation between your transmitter and receiver, for which we are using a reference D naught. Okay, and we find the transmitting, you know, receiving power at D naught, we find the path loss at D naught. And that is used as a reference to further calculate what would be uh, the path loss and the corresponding receiving power, received power at some distance d away. Okay, so this was what was told in the path loss model. And now let us, I mean, not the path loss model, it's the log distance path loss model. Okay, now let us see how did the log shadowing model, okay, how or what difference did it bring about? And as we discussed, D naught is the close in reference distance, which is determined from the measurement close to the transmitter. We already discussed on this. And also N is the path loss exponent, which indicates the rate at which path loss increases with the distance. Okay. Now, what exactly was the uh, shortcomings in your log distance model, which in fact gave way to log shadowing model? Let us see about it. The log distance path model does not consider the fact that the surrounding environment clutter may be vastly different at two different locations having the same TR separation. So if you go by your log distance path model, if you just take the equation into consideration, it depends only on your environment N and the separation distance. That is all what it is considering to calculate what is the path loss. So if we, if we take uh, the the d the distance d it would be common but it is taken in two different locations what we will see is the value will not be actually the same under a practical scenario if you consider the path loss for the same d at two different location will not be same okay but according to your log normal let us come back according to your log distance path model you should you or rather you will have the same value but that is not true so that is one of the shortcomings. So this leads to the measured signal, which are vastly different from the average value predicted by the log distance path model. So to overcome this, we have introduced a new model, which is called the log normal shadowing model. Considers the path loss PLD at a particular location is random and is distributed log normally about the mean distance uh, distant dependent value that is what was suggested or introduced in the log normal shadowing model now here we have introduced a random noise okay that is what so it depends upon the kind of terrain we are choosing or it depends upon the location uh, in addition to what was earlier missing in case of your uh, log distance path model so log distance path model you can see it is pl at d the path loss at d naught plus uh, 10 n times of log d by d naught was the was the equation which was provided to us to find out what is the path loss at d now here we have slightly extended it we have found out that the path loss at d would be given by p l d naught plus 10 n log d by d naught this is the same as what it is for your log distance path model plus we have added a random noise here okay now what is the uh, characteristics of your random noise. It's a zero mean, very important. It is a zero mean. It's a Gaussian distributed random variable, which has a standard deviation of sigma. Okay, see it is a zero mean, it's Gaussian distributed, and it has a standard deviation of sigma. Okay, so these are the parameters that has been described for your random noise. Fine, and uh, to calculate what will be your received power at D, you will have to apply this equation that is the power uh, transmitted power minus pld okay pld is the value which you compute using your uh, log normal shadowing model okay so i think hopefully you would have got 
an idea about how and what exactly is the log shadowing model so let us see just a brief idea about the coding okay if you have got a good enough idea i think you can yourself write a code depending upon your priorities or your choice not an issue this is just for your reference now the speed of light we are defining we are using uh, you know we are assigning a frequency of uh, 2100 megahertz to this variable it's just a variable it's uh, wc wcdma cellular to which we are ass assigning this so it is 2100 into 10 to the power of 6 and here the frequency we are using a new variable frequency to which we are assigning this frequency which we had earlier stored in c uh, wcdma okay and uh, we define your uh, transmitting antenna gain as one uh, similarly the receiving transmitter gain as one and uh, you know the transmitted power we are indicating it to be 0 0.001 okay and then path loss exponent we are taking is equal to two which is for line of sight and uh, we are taking the we have to convert the transmitted power in dbm for which what we can do we will apply it, uh, 10 log to the base 10 the transmitted power value divided by 1 milliwatt that is 1 into 10 to the power of minus 3 so 10 to the power of minus 3 comes in the numerator it becomes 1000 so it's equivalent to multiplying your ptx with 1000 okay now first thing you are taking uh, you are using a variable e into which you are taking an input from the user asking him to choose what is the kind of environment it is is it a free space for, for which you would give an input as one two if it is an urban area cellular radio network uh, if it is uh, you know three if it is a shadowed urban cellular radio four in case of your uh, in building line of sight and so on you have six options given which we had seen in the table initially and then d enter the distance in meters and let us go further and now depending upon what is the value we are choosing that is what is the kind of uh, you know the environment which we are choosing based on that we are finding what should be the corresponding path loss exponent if e is equal to 1 we have in, we are indicating the path loss exponent has a value 2 if e is equal to 2 path loss uh, you know the value is 3.1 because we know there was a range which was given to us right if uh, if it is urban area cellular radio network it was given it is 2.7 to 3.5 so here we have made a precise value we have chosen a precise value of 3.1 Similarly, if E is equal to 3, it is 4 and so on. So we are in fact defining what should be the equivalent value for path loss when the user makes a particular choice. Okay. And then here we are calculating the wavelength. We have already defined uh, your speed as well as your frequency using which you are finding what will be your wavelength. Because that is required to calculate the received power. Now the received power is given by your uh, transmitted power in dBm plus your antenna gain, transmitter antenna gain, plus your receiver antenna gain, minus 10 into path loss exponent, okay, that is n, into 10 log to the base 10, I mean log to the base 10, 4 into pi by lambda, okay, this is what you are using to find out your received power, fine, and now, now we, the next task is to generate the random noise, for which we are using an inbuilt function of your mat, MATLAB, we are calling it, uh, it is random rand in and we are using state and you can you can use the help of matlab to know more details about what this particular function will do or what exactly is going to happen and we are uh, you know assigning it to r state okay and then uh, you know we are considering uh, a new variable gauss random and we are using uh, this relation that is rand in into 0 0.1 plus 0 because we are considering a zero mean and we are displaying it and now we are supposed to calculate and display each of uh, you know each of the conditions so pr1 in case if we are choosing the uh, you know now what are these okay we are choosing as well as we are plotting okay we are finding the random we found the random noise now we have to add the random noise to whatever uh, path loss we have found out and then we will uh, find the corresponding received power so received power is equal to PRO uh, minus 10 into 2 times of log to the base 10 d by d naught plus the Gaussian uh, random noise which we are adding, which we have found out in this stage, we have found it out, okay. So, uh, 
PR and we found out PR1, we'll be plotting PR1. Similarly, PR2. So in case of PR1, we have used NS2. Okay. So when we are considering the when your option E is equal to 1, which we have seen here, then you have an exponent uh, path loss given by 2. So that is what we have used in the relation. Now, if E is equal to 2, then we'll have PR2, which will have a path loss, uh, you know, N is equal to 3.1. See, that is what we have declared. P is equal to 2, the path loss exponent would take a value 3.1 and so on. It can be, you know, the next case will be uh, 4. When you have E is equal to 3, you have a value 4. That is what we have defined and so on. So you can find the corresponding received powers and then we can plot them. So this is what your, uh, your uh, log normal shadowing code would be. If you have understood the concept, I think you can use your own techniques to write the code. Okay, this is just a briefing about how it should be. Okay, so I think uh, we will stop with this. And in the next uh, video, we'll be meeting with Maimo and after which we'll have OUFTIM. Okay, so thank you for now.